Thanks for listening to Indian Motorcycle Radio. This week we're talking about formations, riding in groups, and uh, that title. Have you ever had sex on a motorcycle? We're going to say for the end. Welcome to Indian Motorcycle Radio, and I'm your host, Reverend Ken Blanchard. This is the show about Indian motorcycles and the people that ride and love them. Spring is here, and I still don't have a motorcycle. In case you don't know, I was saving for Indian Roadmaster, and then I created this podcast with dreams of sugar plums dancing in my head. I sold my 2005 Harley Davidson Electric Glide Standard, and I was eyeballing one in Annapolis, Maryland. But don't tell anyone I told you this, but my wife has brain tumor, and I have been praying and managing the stress levels around here. Her surgery is coming soon, and then we'll be good to go. Those that know the word of prayer, please send one up for your girl. Life happens when you're out making plans, but it's all good. In the meantime, ride for me. If you have a story that you'd like to share or experience that you would, you know will sound good on a podcast, call me or email me. I got a new podcast network, by the way. It's called BlanchardNetwork.com, oddly enough. Now, I know you got a story because you've been riding a while, right? I want to thank everybody who's on Indian Motorcycle Radio Facebook page. You know, we get, I get an invitation or an application of somebody who wants to join that page at least once or twice a day. And that's great. That means our numbers are climbing. And it's not all about the numbers either. I really, I really, really, really dig the cool people in this community. And I'm glad that you're finding me, even though my podcasts have been a little bit sparse. But I just told you why. And remember, it's a secret. Don't be spreading that stuff around. Keep it to yourself. My family stuff, the show you can tell everybody about. Hey, it's that time again. And somebody says, hey, man, let's go ride somewhere. And then another buddy says, hey, let's go to this place. And the next thing you know, you got four or five people and you are all cruising. And somebody, you know, it's all stuff you don't say. You just get into formation because that's what the Motorcycle Safety Foundation says. But you've never really talked about it. You've never really discussed it. It is really cool to ride in a group. But the best thing is if you ride with people that you know about the skill level because it requires some skill. Preparation before you leave your starting point will allow the group to understand how to get to your final destination or to any stopping point along the way. Getting there safely is a primary goal, so deciding who leads the group is a big deal. And the leader should not only know the root root of the group, say that three times fast, the root of the group, but also be able to teach and explain what happens along the way. Now, it's really cool if everybody knows all the signs that you had to learn when you first uh, took your test. You know, those hand signals, left turn, right turn, stop, speed up, slow down, single file, double file, follow me, you lead, you come, hazard in the roadway, refreshment stop ahead, comfort stop, cops ahead. How about turn signal on? I'm about to run out of fuel, dude. And that good one of pulling off the road. I need a comfort stop. All those are some signs that you might want to remember if you're riding in a group. Now, the last time I rode in a big group, it was huge. It must have been three, four hundred people. And it was a ride to the D.C. area. We were riding for fallen victims, fallen soldiers. And uh, it was nice. We had enough time to cool off, to cool down, and to prep for this ride. The experienced riders were up. We had guards. We had traffic. We had police escorts. And that all helps. The worst ride that I've had in a group, was only about a dozen of us. No, it wasn't that many. Eight. And believe it or not, the best number is like four. After you get past four, there's some stuff that happens. Some dynamics. Well, this group I had were all local police department people. And I was the only non-active cop there. I had been a former police officer, so they let me hang with them. But 
These guys were lawless, reckless, scary. They were outlaws. What a badge. We were speeding. We were breaking rules. We were just going like we were outlaw bikers for the most part. And everybody but me had a sidearm, which I'm not too cool on riding with. Because if you come down and that sidearm digs into your side, you're going to lose some meat, some bones, some stuff. You can't be too flexible with that thing on your hip. But that's just me. I'm all for concealed carry now. Don't don't get me twisted. But riding, mm-mm, not so much. What this group didn't do real well was obey the laws. They didn't pretty. They didn't um, adhere to any of the stuff that the Motorcycle Safety Foundation purports and suggests and, and suggests and recommends. It's good when your tongue works, you know. Let me share what they didn't do so that you can do better. When you pass a vehicle, you should do it one at a time. One at a, look at that. That dude can't talk today. When you pass somebody and you're in formation, you should do it one at a time. The leader should go first and each rider need to position himself successively afterwards. Yeah. Riders behind the one making the pass will need to adjust their lane position to keep a proper following distance and in the correct pattern in case the passing opportunity dries up. You just don't go willy-nilly. I'm saying four or five people max in a group because you want to be no longer than, let's say, a tractor trailer in distance and size because somebody, some butthole, somebody in a cage, somebody in a car is going to want to pass all of you guys. They just will. And it's a lot easier for them to not screw you up if they don't have to do more than a four or five people. Now, if your position is the right way, then when you pass a vehicle and you're doing it one motorcycle at a time, the second rider should always be aware of oncoming traffic and road conditions prior to overtaking. That's how you do it when you got sensible people, not like I was riding with. And if you do get separated, you don't have to go three times the speed limit to catch up because it's going to happen. Now, if you're in heavy traffic with other motorists or you're in a city, the first thing to remember is not to panic. Remember, if you're doing that pre-journey meeting like you discussed in the beginning, you just continue on and the lead might even slow down or pull over so that you can catch up. Don't do like my group. Be mindful of the skill levels of all riders. Now, I just happen to be the oldest guy in the group. And I think my bike might have been older than most of them guys. So I was a little bit more cautious. I've been riding since 77. Yeah. So I wanted to continue riding in 2021. So I was riding a little slower than they were. They were like, come on, Pops. I know your bike can do it. Absolutely. That wasn't my point. Sometimes you can actually, if you hold back, say you're with a whole bunch of folks who are a little bit less mature than you are and you don't run and catch up with them, they will slow their roll if they really want you to be with them. And that can help them out actually too. You can sandbag a little bit to make them more aware that they were speeding. Sometimes they'll catch on, sometimes they won't. Hand signals are cool, too, if they're paying attention. You know, the new thing now is not even a two-wheeler. So I've seen uh, a Spider and a Can-Am ride the other day with another guy with a, um, I hate to say a crotch rocket. And not dispurging anybody who has a cafe-style bike or a non-Indian bike. I'm just saying. These two guys were riding in and out of traffic. And what happens is, and you don't know it, is that the actions of that person ahead of you can affect you. So say you're riding, you're doing your thing, man. You're cruising, you're loving life because you got an Indian, Indian motorcycle and you're watching the squirrels, you're watching the birds, you're watching all the stuff that God blessed us with. 
But the dudes ahead of you in the car are pissed off because they got cut off by two jerks ahead of you. So when they see you coming up, they think you're in the same group with them. And they show it. They act an ass. Sometimes you got to be watching out for that too. You don't know what happened to them before they got in the car. You don't know what perceptions and what realities happened to them before the motorcycle, you know, cut them off or did whatever. So be careful. Make sure that your turns, make sure that your handling, make sure that you're, that you're on, on your game. That's what I'm saying. You don't know what happened before in that group ride. And you might be following a group of buttholes like I was in. I ended up leaving my group, truth be told. After we got to where we were going, I hung around for a few minutes to be nice and then departed. Sometimes you got to choose your battles. And I chose not to be cool this day, to be the old man who lives, the old man who rides, the old man who enjoys. If you're riding in the country and you're hitting on some curves, each member should remember to ride in a single file that's like two seconds apart. The spacing and lane position can be adjusted according for safety, but you want to make sure whatever you're riding, however you're riding, it's adjusted for each member Now, some people love to be up front. Some people love to hang in the back. But if you have no choice and you're in this group that you just joined, make sure that you're not side by side to anybody. You have no idea what's coming up around the corner. You have no idea what's happening in the lane change. And you want to make sure you have enough distance to react. Formations are cool. But you want to make sure that your spacing is everything. Now, unless you guys ride every week, and you've been riding together for a long time. You won't know each other. You won't know what the condition of each other is. You won't know the drinking condition of each other. Is. You won't know the sleeping condition. You don't know what's on the other person's mind. All that stuff is real. And, you know, as a biker, you're like the silver surfer out there. You're ducking asteroids. You're, du- you're ducking everything. You're, you're flying through the atmosphere. Make sure you arrive alive. Now, I mentioned hand signals earlier. Do you know them? Check out a Motorcycle Safety Foundation pamphlet. I'll put a link to it in the show notes so that you can learn them, so that you can see them. Because maybe you forgot these bad boys. Maybe your left turn looks like a slowdown. Or your left turn looks like a turn to signal on. Or your left turn looks like a comfort stop. Or your left turn looks like a hazard in a roadway. Or speed up. You know, that's um, you're doing all these with your left hand, so... Make sure you know the difference between the ones I just mentioned. Yeah. They can be all close to the same. Make sure you can um, distinguish and be able to do the different ones. And for the record, I never rode with those guys again, those cops. Um, My one friend that's um, a member of that group, we keep in touch, but we're not that close. It's kind of weird, though. Once you become the responsible one, you don't get invited to stuff too often. It's the same as if you're the most reckless, too. It's like there's no in-between. You're either on, you're off. I prefer to be alive, so I'm kind of old-fashioned like that. So if we're riding together, know that um, we're going to be enjoying the day. Let me know if I'm off base here. Let me know if I'm being a stickler. Let me know what your thoughts are on this whole safety piece on riding. And if you have any tips that you can share, please share them on our Facebook page. Indian Motorcycle Radio Facebook page has been growing even though the podcast has been silent. And that's a good thing because it's not up to me. You guys make this thing work. If you're still listening, if you're still a part of the channel, if you're still listening to the podcast, know that um, I still have some Indian Motorcycle Radio stickers that I would love to send out to you. Just send me an email at ken.blanchard at gmail.com. And that's Ken with two N's. Blanchard is spelled B-L-A-N-C-H-A-R-D. Yeah. This show is part of BlanchardNetwork.com. That's right. It's a podcast network. Welcome to Indian Motorcycle Radio. And I'm your host, Reverend Ken Blanchard. And then there's Speak Life Church Podcast. In hopes of encouraging your spirit, feeding your faith, and blessing your life. Proverbs 1821. I will speak. And if you're into the gun community, 
There is the Black Man with a Gun Show. Blackmanwithagun.com. Ken Blanchard's Pro Gun Podcast. And then there's my son, Ken Blanchard Jr. To the Warrior Cast Podcast, where we talk about all things martial arts, combat sports, UFC, boxing, and all the sort, pop culture, all things anime, video games, and sci fi, and everything in between. I'm a warrior. I'm here to stay. My mind is sharp. I don't play no games. I'm a warrior. And then there's the baby on the block. If I died tonight, welcome to an unconventional podcast aimed to help you wherever you are in this thing called life. And you can find all of these at BlanchardNetwork.com. You ever had sex on your motorcycle? Now, I admit this title of this episode is clickbait. No, I haven't even tried. And I was pretty raunchy once in my life. You know, I found out that there was like actually a video of somebody up in uh, the UK, somewhere in Europe. Somebody was actually doing it while they was riding. I bet you're saying, man, I can't believe Rev got that on his show. Well, see, believe it or not, sex experience on a bike is often a fantasy of most of us. And when it comes to fruition, it can be disappointing if it's not uh, as expected. I'm not going to get into it. I'm going to tell you, though, that you shouldn't do it in public. Yeah, privacy is still a mandatory thing. Public nudity is against the law in almost every state. And the charge can range from a ticket to jail time. And if a minor happens to cross paths in your escapade, you could actually end up with a sex offender label for the rest of your life. So avoid legal troubles by choosing to only have your motorcycle sex in areas where there is no danger of being viewed by others. I did a little research on this topic before I came on, and I thought, no, I'm not going to share it. I don't want to be one of those older dudes that uh, starts to talk about sex all the time because he ain't doing it, so he just want to talk about it. And if that's you, know that you might be creeping out your friends. I'm just letting you know that right off the bat. They might not tell you, but I'm going to tell you. Even though all of us think about it all the time, even though all of us would love it most of the time, it's not safe for work. It's not safe around just about anybody these days. And the world has changed, in case you notice. Folks are sensitive about stuff that they never were sensitive about before. Ain't my rules. I'm just stating fact. And I'm all about enjoying life. And I want you to enjoy it as well. Not get hung up on something crazy. So until we are all in the, on a campfire after a nice ride together and there's no microphones and no televisions, recording devices, then we can get raunchy and talk about some stuff. Deal? Deal. And that's going to be it for this week. Thank you for listening. Thank you for following. Check out the new BlanchardNetwork.com. It's the, it's the secret network of all the podcasts that I produce. Motivation check. How do you think I'm doing? on this here, your podcast for Indian Motorcycle Brotherhood. If you like what I'm doing, what I'm putting down, what I'm putting out, please share this with your riding buddies, with your friends. If you got ideas for shows, if you want some content advertising your business, contact me. This is for us. And if you want to do more, consider a small monthly donation to buymeacoffee.com forward slash motorcycles. The link will be in the show notes. Encouragement, welcome. All right, my friends, that's it for this week. I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to your favorite righteous podcast, Indian Motorcycle Radio. Now may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon you. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Kick stands up. Let's ride.